comeback. <laughs> And welcome to my channel and into this new video. I am back from Australia. I went there for a whole month. Honestly, it was a little bit much. At the end, I was really eager to go back. Not because it wasn't amazing, but mostly because I really wanted to get back to work. That's how I am. So yeah, I'm back from Australia. I did a lot and I'm going to talk and show you a few bits of videos in today's video. Also, it's raining. I originally wanted to film yesterday and it was raining all day. And this morning it was fine and now when I finally decide to put up the camera and film this video of course it's raining. I hope it's not going to be too much of a bother in this video. I have my mic just there out of the camera so hopefully it will pick up mostly my voice and not so much the rain. Yeah we will see. I brought a few things back. Well not everything is from Australia. That's one book that I bought in Paris but I'm going to show you all of this today as well. I also have some art supplies. Not a lot just those two and I have a little sketchbook. I didn't paint every day but I did paint a bit and I'm going to show you that as as well and I have a bit of footage on my phone that I did. I honestly don't know how good it is I haven't really checked so I will see how it goes during editing. It's again a very professional video where everything is planned out not spontaneous at all proper professional youtuber hopefully with great editing skills. So first off Melbourne is really far away from France in case you didn't know. I started from here from France traveled all the way to Singapore, made a break here in the airport, which was an airport, big shopping food, and then traveled all the way down to the South Hemisphere, which I never went to, to Melbourne, which is here. It's, it's on the other side of the world, basically. It's a long travel. I honestly, I, I, I'm not sure it's that worth it. I'm off to a good start. Australia is great, the nature is great, cities are not very interesting as a European. I had a great time, the landscapes were amazing, the birds, my god the birds, I miss them already. But it's very far away, it's quite expensive to go there and so as a European I'm not sure how necessary that is. I mean I feel like you can go see nature that is closer to you and not go to Australia. If you live somewhere in Asia or somewhere near Australia then probably yes it's it's a really interesting place. So I suppose New Zealand is even better in terms of nature so I don't know. Anyway I basically did all the east coast of Australia. So I arrived in Melbourne and then I took a plane to Cairns. Let's just accept that my environmental impact in terms of traveling this year is off the charts and move on, shall we? So, traveled up to Cairns, which was amazing. Then down to Brisbane to a friend, Sydney, Melbourne again for the opening of my solo show. And then I finished in Ho in Hobart. Hobart? I don't remember how they pronounce it. It's a long O. Hobart in Tasmania, and then back to Melbourne and then back home. So that's the plan. <laughs> I think Cairns was what I liked the best in terms of nature, not climate. It's in a tropical region. I've never been to the tropics before. It's hot and humid. It's unbearable. <laughs> it, it was really difficult. I, I love the nature and everything, but the climate was harsh. Cairns itself is a 200 years old city. It's not especially beautiful. It's just not very interesting. What is interesting in Cairns is that you get access to the Great Barrier Reef and to the rainforest. So those are basically the two main attractions and the two reasons why I went there. So I started with a guided tour to see the wildlife and the wildlife in the evening and at night and that was quite amazing. So the first thing that I think was unusual is that the forest at night is not much more 
dangerous than at days. And as a European, depending on where you are, you do have bears and boars, wolves as well. So night is probably not the best time to go to the forest. It can get dangerous in some parts of Europe. But over there, basically, you have possums. <laughs> I mean, you have spiders, but they are not more dangerous at night than at day, so that doesn't really change. So yeah, you have possums and kangaroos, marsupials, so you don't really have any big predators. You have dingoes, but not that up far. I think, I think they're mostly in the subtropical region of Australia. You do have salty crocodiles, which are huge, but they are in the water, so not really in the rainforest. And especially when we went to that tour, we went a bit um, higher, so maybe maybe about 800 meters of altitude, so nothing crazy, but still, the climate was much nice as well. And of course it rained, uh, which, I mean, it's a rainforest, so on point, but it was pouring to the point that actually branches fell on top of the path we were, and it was a really small path, uh, so that was quite an adventure. I actually got a leech on my trousers. I didn't really come as a tourist. I did check before how to dress and I asked and so on. So I was fully covered. I had a lightweight linen shirt, long shirt, and then I had trousers, lightweight as well. Everything was light colored, mint and blue. I probably have a picture of how I looked, which I'm going to add to <laughs> the video so you have a better understanding how fashionable I looked. I kind of liked it, kind of digged the explorer vibe that I had. And I had a leech when the rain was falling, so heavily we all got drenched it was kind of uh, yeah it was brutal i got a leech and it's the only time i had a leech really on me it just was on my trousers and it just kind of you know got rid of it i hope i didn't kill it they're apparently they're really strong so it's hard to kill them i don't know they're not really dangerous they just suck your blood and then once they're satiated they just fall off most people are kind of afraid of leeches it's kind of okay disgusting you know you have a small parasite that attaches to your skin and drinks blood but they're not dangerous because they don't stay there and they don't give you any disease ticks are much more of a problem but we've got ticks in europe so um i wasn't too worried about that i put my socks over my trousers and i also had bug spray because it's australia so uh, everyone seems to wear bug spray probably more because of the mosquitoes i'm not sure but i definitely had bug spray it was amazing i really loved it we also saw those huge strangling fig trees and i think i really fall in love with fig trees basically it's not really a tree those they start their life on top of other trees so they arrive with bird poop or things like that they start in the branches and then they send their roots down then they they end up strangling the parasitic trees. They're actually really problematic if you've got one in your garden because they reproduce pretty fast and then they kill everything else. But in terms of aesthetics, <laughs> really nice, really beautiful. We saw two huge ones that stayed up because usually what happens is they strangle the tree, they kill the tree, the host, and then everything falls down and dies. But for some reason, they were two really Really big ones in that forest and those they did stand up so the tree inside or the host tree was dead but the fig tree was still standing and strong very impressive I saw some platypus uh, lots of possums a few kangaroos I don't really have pictures of them I mean I have but they're pointless <laughs> I also saw some huge huntsman spiders they're not very dangerous in the sense that they're not going to kill you and they're not aggressive but they're they're big, they're freakishly big, so I thought they were beautiful, but I can understand that if you have that in your home, you would be a bit like, you. Huntsman spiders, they don't do any webs, that's why they're called huntsmans, because basically they hunt their prey, so you will not find them somewhere in a web and they just move around. If you have them in your house, they're actually great to have in your house because they kill all the rests, all the actual pests, and again, they're not really dangerous. Even if they bite you, apparently it does hurt a bit, but it's not really dangerous. The deadliest spider in Australia is the redback. It's a rather tiny black spider with a red cross on its back. That one is a bit more problematic because it tends to stay in sheds and garages, so very close to humans. Its spider is deadly. Of course, Australia now has anti-venom, so nobody dies from their bites anymore, but still, I suppose it's better not to get bitten. The other thing that I didn't 
in Cairns was to go snorkeling over the Great Barrier Reef and that honestly was the most amazing experience I've had so far in my life. <laughs> Sounds like I'm exaggerating but I'm really not. I've never snorkeled before so this was really new, all the sensations that you have and I also think that for me personally I went to Australia and Cairns and in that specific very raw nature at the perfect time in my own life because I know the species so I could recognize the species and feel that makes the whole difference. I had a real appreciation for what I was seeing but I was also recognizing the species that I was seeing so that was quite amazing. Just the feeling of snorkeling so if you've ever snorkeled you're probably going to understand that but basically you are at the surface of the water and you are floating over the reef but the reef goes down like a cliff so sometimes you hover over something that goes deep down and it's almost like flying over a cliff but at the same time you feel completely safe because you feel that you're just floating so it's a very interesting sensation of floating flying danger safe kind of feeling. I tried to make a picture of it but it just it's really hard to explain but it's quite magical. Now the Great Barrier Reef itself is dying sadly I knew about it. I did see all the signs the bleaching the extreme glowing before bleaching, the cobalt algae, but still there's part of it that is healthy and there's still a lot of fish around. It still was gorgeous to me. Amazing experience. It's hard to put into words. I don't have any footage of it. For one, I really wanted to be in the moment and I don't didn't really want to bother with filming it. If I was going to film that with my phone camera, it would have been crappy footage anyway. So, And I, I was so afraid also to just drop my phone into the reef and be like, oh crap. They were selling these tiny plastic baggages where you put your phone in and I was also like, does, that doesn't look very safe. I mean, if some water gets inside, then I'm up. Did do that, but it was amazing, really loved it. I also went to the botanical garden, beautiful plants, gorgeous. Ugh, I don't really have more words for that. It started to hike up a bit, but then I got scared because I saw such a huge lizard. I'm not kidding, it was about this size. I don't remember what it was, a friend of mine supposed it was something. I had, I have no clue. It ran away. I'm sure it was not dangerous, but I was alone and that small hill, it was going up, it was really hot that day. I walked about 20 minutes in one direction, met nobody, was like, yeah, I'm, I'm really stressed out now. If something happens, I, I feel very much alone here in the middle of nowhere, so I'm just going to go down. I did some hiking, so that was still quite nice. Then I went to Brisbane. I actually went to a friend of mine. She's an entomologist and she brought me back to the bush. Again, the bush is amazing. The fig trees everywhere, the roots in general, the buttress roots. The buttress roots basically the trees in the rainforest. They have very shallow roots because it's so humid that they don't need to have very deep roots to go and get the water, but that's bad for stability. So they evolved to make buttresses at the base of the trees. And so it gives those trees that are very aesthetic, very beautiful, I really love the trees. With my friend, she booked a tour to see glowworms and that was quite magical. Again, impossible to take a picture of or a video about it. So you just have to imagine and listen to my voice. <laughs> Lucky you. We went down at night in the forest and down to a sort of cave. And then you had all these glow worms that were on the cave. So they are kind of, they are tiny larvae. I don't remember of what, to be honest. But it kind of looks like a galaxy because you have all these tiny dots of lights in the dark. And since we were in the middle of the rainforest, you would look up and you would also see the stars because it wasn't really a cave it was like more 
kind of deep down and so you would still see the sky and the glowworms but it was down in the rainforest so it was really pitch black but if you would look up through the canopy you would see the stars so you had that double galaxy really beautiful oh we also had a massive hailstorm it's good that i wrote these down because so much happened during that month i went out every day it takes time to remember everything so yeah we had a massive hailstorm in that rainforest the hails and i have a picture of that they were that big we actually wanted to go for a walk and then it started to, to rain a bit and we were not that fast we were like oh let's just go back to the room and wait for it to pass because we don't really want to get wet <laughs> and then it started to hail and then that massive hail size and we we're like oh it's good we didn't go out today <laughs> and then we went out again once it stopped to do a canopy walk that was really nice to be in the canopy really like that we also oh yeah that was fascinating so my friend she's an entomologist she also sells anything bug related bug pins bug brooches jewelry earrings bags etc i'm going to link her website and social media down below it's a sign job for her so she's a scientist entomologist at day and works with fruit flies but at night she has that craft shop and she also does things with insects so if you're into bugs you might be interested in that Anyway, she's a scientist and of course she has scientist friends and she knew they were doing a study right now in the forest, in the rainforest. So it was near O'Reilly's, if you know that place, it's pretty well known. Anyway, it's not far from Brisbane. And that study was a moth study. It was a moth distribution study and they did one 20 years ago and so they came back to do another study and so basically what they do they put on traps to trap moth um, and then they zift through all the insects so they're dead obviously uh, all the dead insects and then they note where they are and the idea at the end of the study to see if the distribution changed if the moth where they live changed if it was high up in altitude or lower down or if anything changed we went to their sort of lab where they had all those moths in the midst of being pinned and I took a lot of pictures of these because they were all very fresh. And I actually asked about pigmentation, maybe not at that time, but another time. I did a lot. I'm not able to tell you everything, but I know pigmentations in moth or insects basically you have two types you have proper pigments and those stay in time and then you have something that is closer to dyes and those will fade after a while so yeah the moths were really fresh and so the colors were really vibrant still and yeah beautiful i really like that it was really interesting to see science happening, especially since I read a lot about natural history research and studies, so seeing it in real was really interesting. I think I really need to do an art residency with a scientist at some point because I'm fascinated by it. I think maybe at some point my work is going to go more on a scientific tangent. I don't know, that's another topic. We went to the Gold Coast. It's a surfer's paradise, so you have huge beaches. The Gold Coast is a huge city, which I did not expect. I thought it was just, you know, a nice coast. We did go on a walk along the coast and that was amazing, especially there were butterflies everywhere. I think it was mating season and you had those huge, or not huge, but you had all those trees on the rocks and that was really exotic to me so i liked it I'm, I'm, I'm a simple girl you show me nice trees and roots and nature i'm happy we also went to an exhibition from a fellow artist and she makes moth out of paper and i loved her work i really liked it i think it was great and amazing i'm really interested in paper art right now because i want to work more with paper in my sculptural work paper and watercolor specifically so yeah i loved uh, seeing that small exhibition and she was also really nice. Um, I did see some koalas in the sanctuary. I feel like every time I have something to say it's going to take five minutes for each thing. A anyway, so koalas, you don't really see them a lot in nature, uh, simply because they sleep between uh, 19 and 22 hours per day, so that's a lot. And also they're solitary, so you will have one koala for quite a big territory and it's just going to be up there in the canopy, somewhere in, in one eucalyptus, and then just, you know, they're in sleeping. So you don't really see them easily. Yeah, don't have much more to say about that. It's less fun to see animals in sanctuaries. Also because you know they cannot be put back in the wild because they're sick or they cannot reproduce anymore. So it's kind of sad. But at the same time, it's cute because you see them. A bit, bit conflicting.
Then I went to Sydney and Sydney was very exciting for me as an architect because of the opera. I did take pictures of the opera at all times of the day, at night, at sunset, in the morning, when it was raining, when it was sunny. I felt the need to take so many pictures also for my boyfriend who's an architect because he wasn't able to come with me during that month and we've studied architectures to together so he, I think that it's the only thing that he was kind of jealous maybe not jealous but like he, he would have liked to see it himself was probably the opera of Sydney. I mean everything else he was like oh that's really nice and beautiful but the opera he, th he was like oh damn I wish I would be there. <laughs> so I felt like we need to take so many pictures of it and I did and it was really nice. So yeah a lot of time in Sydney was spent on that. I also went to the Natural History Museum which was not bad. I did actually do a few sketches about it. The platypus especially since I saw it anyway. The koala as well. Yeah and that was it in that museum. I think it was the museum I enjoyed the most during my whole Australia trip. The other thing in Sydney is to to go for a coastal walk, which I did. I basically, every time I would just check out what you see in the city I was in. And as a naive European, I originally thought there would be much more to do in a city because usually when you travel in Europe, you go to a city, you can spend two weeks easily and do something different every day. But in Australia, cities themselves are not very interesting. It's usually what is around the cities that is interesting. So in Sydney, there are the Blue Mountains, which I was not able to go to. And all the coastal walks, and I did one. The Bondi Coogee walk, coastal walk, and that was really nice. Full of tourists after some point. I also went there without sunscreen. So they actually have sunscreen at the beach. So if you forget it, you can put it on. But I was already, I, I've, I've been walking for one or two hours and the sun was coming up and it was getting hot and was feeling that my skin would not be happy. And honestly, I was finished with that walk, so I left. And I didn't stay a long time in Sydney. Otherwise, I would certainly have done more coastal walks. If you ever go to Australia, focus on nature. Don't really think about cities. They're done in like half a day and that's it. Even most of the museums, probably an, a day is enough for any city in Australia. What you really want to focus on is to go to nature, go in the bush, go at the coast, go see the reef, go see the animals and then you're going to be happy about it. A quick note on ibis birds. Ibis birds were pretty much everywhere. Birds in general are crazy in Australia and I really want to do more artworks on them just because I was like so so amazed by them but ibis birds especially I especially liked and then I learned that people call them chicken bins because they are everywhere and they try to eat whatever we leave behind us and so people don't really like them which is sad and kind of illogical <laughs> they live from the trash we create and then we're like oh that's dirty but I mean we created the trash the bird isn't at fault here it's the human and yeah they're beautiful their legs are kind of like skeleton. They have dark black legs and then you have white stripes onto the legs and it looks like a skeleton. They're pretty big birds and then they have those long necks and very long curved beaks. The head is black, the body is white and yeah beautiful birds. I love them. I saw them in Cairns until Sydney but I didn't see any in Melbourne. Also not in Hobart's in Tasmania I didn't see any. I don't know if they are just more rare or if they are more in the bush. I don't know. I just didn't see them. I really miss them. They're beautiful birds. I did see a lot of lizards as well. Then I went back to Melbourne for the solo show. So the opening was on the 5th of November and it went really well. People were, they seemed to really enjoy my work and every time I would talk about the meaning behind it, then they would like it even more. I mean, it's always good for your ego as an artist once in a while to get approval from people who enjoy art, if that makes sense. So yeah, it was a really nice evening. I did sell two pieces or one piece before the opening and two pieces during the opening. And that 
that's always great to actually meet and talk to the collector and to see you know that shine in the eye when they buy a piece the show is still running until the 27th so until the end of this week so far i've sold five pieces so that's half of the show john from the gallery was really nice too very helpful and i just had a great time honestly i also met two other artists one which whom i had talked a bit more before uh, he's a ceramic artist we went to a vegan chinese restaurant and it was so good in melbourne uh, his name is vipo he does ceramic work and it's more expressionist than realistic. Usually it's kind of cute and funny and I don't know, really kind of like his work. And then I also met another artist, Kaneko Caris. I'm going to say it French-wise, I don't remember how we would pronounce it in English. Kay and I spent a great time with him as well. We spent the day together and that was really great. Went to uh, see a bit art museum and also to through the botanical garden. And he actually gifted me an artwork which I was not expecting and it's amazing. It's a rose mixed with an octopus and he works with acrylics. I would say it's the typical hyper-realistic, surrealistic style that is kind of from my niche basically. Uh, you, you see that type of art a lot in my niche and why work and yeah i really dig it I, I was so happy that he would give that to me it was a, such a surprising gift and he was a really sweet person so yeah i had a great day with them Melbourne I then went to Harbert and we are ending almost the journey so honestly before leaving to Hobart, uh, after the solo show, I, I was already feeling a bit tired of the holidays. Because at some point you get so many impressions, there are so many new things that you see that you kind of just want to go back home and work on it. Because you're so inspired by nature and everything you saw that you want to get back home and then actually work. And I was really missing my studio and so I, when I went to Hobart, I was basically a bit tired and the first day in Hobart I didn't really do anything but I had booked two tours or not one tour I had booked um, an art museum and the last day I wanted to hike up Mount Wellington which I all did and that was amazing. I feel like Tasmania is also a place where you could have stayed a lot longer. Nature is really interesting down there. So the first tour I did was a Tasmanian cruise and we went on a boat. It was really amazing. The um, the geology of it, the rocks, the rock formations, it was so ge geometric. I've, I have never seen that before in my life. It was just gorgeous. I don't really have words. It was just really, really beautiful. The landscapes were amazing. And after that, we went in uh, on a zoo. So it wasn't a zoo because animals were not in cages, but they would feed the animals or they would bring out food and so all the local animals to Tasmania would come. So we saw the Tasmanian devil which was a bit bigger than I imagined. I mean it's small, it's kind of cutish, it's marsupial, it's, 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 it's a cute little one. Lots of birds and kangaroos as well. So yeah it was overall a great day. The day after I went up to Mount Wellington. So I saw you could do hikes from down but it's 1200 meters high and what I did I booked a uh, hop and half bus and after talking with the bus driver he led me about 300 meters down from the peak and I just went up 300 meters and the original idea was to go back down I think 500 meters but the end I descended 800 meters down which is actually quite a lot. The landscape was again amazing. I I was I was so impressed by the rocks. I feel like I, I really like when you have huge rocks and nature growing on top, uh, but also the colors and there was this water everywhere. So it was really beautiful. There are also snakes <laughs> and all snakes are venomous. So 
yeah, they're all dangerous basically. They're not aggressive and what they do is usually they are on the path and they're soaking in the sun because they're cold blooded obviously. You do want to stomp with your feet so they feel the vibrations and when they feel that they just they slither away but you have to let them time, time enough so they can you know go away. I saw one snake. Basically I was so focused on the path checking if there were no, no huge snakes there because I was a bit afraid I was hiking alone. Now those hiking trails were pretty well visited so you would meet people all the time maybe every 10-15 minutes so I was not too worried even if I would get bitten I was not in the middle of nowhere completely alone so I was not too worried about that but I was still a bit scared because I knew there were snakes and so I was really careful to check on the path at the same time you know you get all that landscape in and everything is so gorgeous at some point I was like looking at the path and then I I see from the corner of my eye something slithering away and when I look up and I see um, 1 meter 20 about snakes. It, it was, a, I learned after that it was a tiger snake, it was black and it just like slithered away. I was like, <laughs> and I just waited for it to really be out of my vision somewhere in the bush and then I, you know, ran past it. That snake is actually the most potent so if that snake bites you and you don't get anti-venom you can die. That being said anti-venom is very normal or very usual and nobody dies from a snake bite anymore because you do get snake bites obviously in the bush. I think that cannot be helped especially if you're used to the bush. I feel like probably people like me who are extremely careful because they don't know anything they get bitten less because they just look all the time and check you know, the branches, the trees before touching them, the ground. So we are so focused on not getting bitten that um, the chances are probably lower. But w once you get used to the bush and you realize, well, you don't see that much snakes, then you're less careful. And then I suppose once in a while you might get bitten, especially if you go to the bush all the time. But yeah, death is a very rare occurrence nowadays just because anti-venoms um readily available but yeah i saw a snake so that was nice so anyway i went up to mount wellington down and it was a great day i love that day the next day i went to mona which is an art museum it's very conceptual everyone was honestly i think everyone oversold it to me and i'm not going to say it's not a good art museum but it's not that great <laughs> that's that's all I can say about it. A lot of art was very sexual which I just don't I'm not interested in very sexual artwork. I, I never was. I feel like it's a bit obsolete because sex is so prevalent in mainstream culture that I don't there's nothing taboo about it. You know like nobody's shocked anymore to see genitals basically. <laughs> so any artwork who works on that you're like okay if you want to whatever and so that's kind of how i feel about that type of artwork i'm just like and then there was also that i'm starting with the bad artwork or the artwork that i didn't like there was also the poop machine which is a machine that produces poop that's also a sort of art theme that has been going on for 20 years i remember that when i was studying uh, and i'm like <sighs> Yeah, we all poop, ha ha. But then certain things were really impressive. The building itself is gorgeous. I feel like just the building itself is worth a visit. I had planned to stay the whole day, which I mean, I didn't have a choice. I had to stay because I took the ferry to go and the ferry back. So I booked the first ferry and the last ferry because I figured, well, I can always, you know, draw or do something. But in the end, I was finished in like two or three hours. And then I had food and was like, okay, um, what now? And the thing is, if you go with friends, I feel like you can much more easily stay the whole day because you have a cafe in the museum, you have, there's a homey feeling to the museum. You have artworks, but you have a lot of sofas and couches where people sit down and chat. So you have something of a very social museum. It's 
at the intersection of being in a personal collector's home and a museum, which is exactly what it is, because it's just one guy who started to collect art and who decided at some point to make a museum out of it, so a rich guy basically. And so that concept of museum is quite nice, but I feel it's more if you go there with someone, because if you're alone, you're just like, well, I... very fun sitting down by myself. So at the end, I was just sitting down, I was reading a bit and, you know, drinking something just, you know, to pass time. So I enjoyed it, but I feel like half a day is probably enough. The first half I really enjoyed the museum and the second half I was so bored that I didn't enjoy it and so it resulted in me having a um, half good experience if that makes sense but if I had come just half a day I would be oh yeah that was an amazing experience and I would have gone off and you know went into nature or something like that. Spending the whole day by myself just too much. I think half a day is, is enough. Morning Maybe eat there and then go back. That would have been much better. Yeah, that's it. You think I was over? Yeah, I thought so too. I'm not. So I bought some books. I bought two little postcards that were really nice. I Originally I wanted to buy four, but I realized that in Melbourne you have less cool stuff, well, less touristic stuff than in Brisbane, Sydney and Cairns. So I, I bought a postcard of a rainbow loriquette by Jeremy Boot, an Australian artist, which I quite liked. You see rainbow loriquettes pretty much everywhere. It's a bit like the ibis, you see them everywhere. It's so amazing. I, I miss them too. And I bought an artwork or a postcard from Marini Ferlazzo. He's also an Australian artist and he does that thing that I like where you mix different types of nature and you kind of bunch them together. So I took this postcard not because it was my favorite one but because they didn't really have a lot of different ones so I went with that one. I also got a monography from Segar Passy. I saw an exhibition in Cairns about that guy. He's an Aboriginal artist and his work was kind of naive but almost realistic although he would only paint what he would see so it's just the skies in Australia are fantastic I'm not sure exactly why they are that impressive but the cloud formations are like I've, I've never seen something like that in my life before and I think it's probably because the Pacific is maybe huge maybe the Great Barrier Reef changes something about the wind movement or the current I don't know but I've never seen such beautiful skies before and I live by the ocean so I'm used to very impressive skies but n not to that amount and I also wanted to buy that book just for support, I guess. Next to nature in Australia, Aboriginal art is really interesting. And then I got another book and I bought that book in Hobart. So they had this Aboriginal art gallery in Hobart and so I went to just check it out. And I already had in my head a plan to buy a book about Aboriginal art because I really like the very abstract art and the honesty um, of it. It just, it's so strong, it's hard to explain. I think whenever an artist is very honest and no, not overthinking about his artwork, that person is able to create something that is great. It just, there's not no other words to describe it. And so I went to that small art gallery and they had original art, but that I don't have the money to pay that. Uh, and also shipping and all, everything, it would have been very a few thousands uh, at least. I would have loved but yeah not an option so I was looking at books and I think I spent probably 20 to 30 minutes just looking at all the books to find the book that I like best and I ended up picking this one mostly for one specific artwork which I absolutely loved uh, because of the colors. I also picked this book because it was showing a bigger variety of artwork and not just one specific region or a monography or just women or whatnot. And there's a lot of text, I'm going to zip through it probably. It's going to be a bit of an inspiration, I think. Um, yeah, I'm really glad I got it, but bah, it's so heavy. <laughs> I didn't say that because I don't think it matters all that much. But basically I went with a suitcase with some artworks which I left in Melbourne at the gallery and the rest of my travel. I, I usually just travel with a backpack. So when you buy something like this with a backpack, you kind of regret it. But yeah, I don't. It's a great book. The other book that I bought, but not in Australia, but I'm just going to share it anyway because it was during my trip, was in Paris. 
and I've been following this artwork, this artist for a while. It's Laurie Lipton. She was in Paris and she was at a group show about drawings in Paris at La Halle Saint-Pierre, which is still going on. I don't know until when. And she was doing the book signing. And if you watch this video when it comes out, there's going to be another book signing tomorrow. So on 27th of November. Uh, so she talks about her artwork and sh then she does book signing if there are still books left because it's a very limited <laughs> book edition. And yeah, she only works in graphite and her work is just amazing. So I'm really happy I got that book. I find her work really inspiring because it's very political and I'm very inspired by her work. It, it really makes me think about what I should do in my own work. And last but not least, I did get some art supplies. I actually checked online which brands were local to Australia and there were more than that, but then I was able to practice detachment and not buy everything. Uh, so I just went with watercolor from Art Spectrum and I ended up buying five tubes of paint. I actually tried them already and did a small sketch with them. I really quite like the Australian leaf green dark, which is it's a nice combination of pigments that um, yeah I really like that one but yeah they're all really nice it's a nice little palette you can make artworks with them it's probably going to be more for sketchbook practice or inspirational things for me than proper artwork because I do use schminke so I feel like if you do proper artworks you might as well use the best quality paint you have and from what I've seen by using them they are not as good as schminke which I mean I was expecting but I really wanted to have something from Australia for me I do like to bring back art supplies and the last thing I bought was in the most amazing art shop I I've ever seen and that one was in Fitzroy which is the most hip neighborhood in Melbourne and when I say hip for people like me you've got a lot of vintage and second-hand shops you have handmade stuff lots of vegan places you know that type of neighborhood so I like those <laughs> it's Berlin basically but without the architecture of Berlin and there was that one shop where you would pass by and you had that wall of pigments and was like oh. and I saw it at night and I saw it at the very beginning of my Australian trip and I saw it and was like wow this is a amazing. I put it in my Google Maps and uh, when I went back to Melbourne the last days I was just basically the last days in Melbourne I just walked around the city. I usually like to do that to get a feel of the city. I'm mostly interested in the normal life residential areas and stuff like that and so I passed not so far by this one by this shop so I went in. Of course I had to buy something. I hesitated a long time because they have well obviously they have pigments but apparently everyone gets their pigments from the same place and in Europe the most uh, known is Crema I would say although you also have Sennelier who sells pigments I actually have some and while I'm really interested in doing my own paints for now I felt like maybe something else I checked their oil paints but I have so many oil paints and it's not the thing that I use the most right now and then I saw this tiny dainty little thing and this is handmade watercolor. It's just five colors. One of them is Mother Lake which is not light fast but I don't care and it came in that beautiful little wooden box and was like yeah I'm going to take that. So I bought that. Probably the most expensive. No the Aboriginal book was, was the most expensive but still pretty expensive but yeah I'm really glad I did. I might do a small video talking about this art supplies but knowing myself I probably won't because I'm I don't really like to do that type of videos but you never know maybe maybe one day I'll show you all of my watercolors and uh, talk about them so yeah that's pretty much it this video is going to be so long I talked over I talked about one hour now so I have one hour of me talking this is going to be fun <laughs> And yeah, I'm going to edit it today because I want it out this week so I can go back to proper work. I also, because we are still at the end of it, I actually updated my print shops with all my prints, with all the pictures. Australia was great. Nature was amazing. I really enjoyed my time. If you're European, do you have to go? No, you really don't. As much as I liked it, I still feel that it's really far away. Very expensive to go there and I'm not sure it's worth it. I mean, it's, it's beautiful, 
but there are beautiful places all over the world. Actually just flying to Australia kind of made me fall again with Earth. I haven't been traveling by plane for a long time and being in the plane and looking outside of the window is like Earth is incredibly beautiful and that's what I want to take away from that trip is that nature is incredibly beautiful and uh, yeah I hope you remember that next time you go out in the nature and enjoy life nature is beautiful with that note I hope you liked this video it was really long maybe you worked while you listened to me maybe not thank you so much for staying with me until now if you did leave an emoji some kind of a bird because honestly i didn't talk a lot about birds but the birds in australia you've got pelicans you've got black swans you have so many parrots cockatoos the lorikeets you have the ibis birds every bird is different from europe so yeah that was amazing birds are amazing and actually they have a lot of different birds so if you watch this video until now and are not completely bored out of your mind leave a bird emoji and uh, yeah and I'll know that some of you had actually liked or stayed until the end you might not have liked it but <laughs> you stayed which uh, yeah I'm very grateful for so yeah thank you so much I hope to see you in my next video and uh, yeah I'm going to edit this and then work because I have a lot of work on my plate anyway thank you so much and I hope to see you next time bye